This video was made possible by my Patreon. Become a Patreon today and support the channel directly by clicking the link in the description and signing up. I found this article from Bloomberg that states that China is pushing for hydrogen transportation and infrastructure. And that sparked my interest, considering I have been a skeptic of hydrogen as a solution to a sustainability problem. Which means that I simply had to figure out if they knew something that I didn't. So I set out to do exactly that, and I have found something very interesting. So in this video, I will discuss those findings so you can get a better understanding of why China is pushing for hydrogen. Also, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing, it's free and you can always change your mind. Okay, so let's start by looking at the article I found as it includes all the plans that China has for sustainability and for hydrogen powered vehicles and production. Here we see them mentioning a 15 year plan for new energy vehicles in China. The plan states that the country will focus on building the fuel cell supply chain and development of hydrogen powered trucks and buses. And remember those, we will come back to those later. But that's not all. China also plans to become carbon neutral by 2060. Which is not the most ambitious goal we have seen by a country, but a goal nonetheless. But these goals made me wonder why they have now changed the view on the climate. So now, Let's just try to understand why that is the case. Because as you probably know, China is the most polluting country in the world by a significant margin. So it does seem strange that they now have a sudden desire to change that and become carbon neutral. As I don't believe it's down to the goodness of their hearts or wanting to save the planet. Don't believe me? Well, you actually don't need to look further than their most populated cities to see at least one of their motivations to end pollution. You see, here, well, you actually don't see Shanghai skyline as it is hiding behind this thick fog of pure pollution. And honestly, looking at this reminds me of the time when I visited China back in 2011, where the tour guide explained that we would be lucky to get a clear view of the skyline because of the severely polluted air. And that was back in 2011, so trying to imagine how much worse it has gotten since then is genuinely challenging. Although unfortunately, I don't have to. Looking at the statistics of premature deaths related to pollution in China, we see that more than a million people die there annually. And that number is steadily increasing each year. I think it's fair to say that China is paying the price for its rapid economic growth that has been fueled by greed, ignorance and fossil fuels. I am confident that China knows the only solution to the air quality problem is complete sustainability. Which leads us to their recent interest in hydrogen. You see, on the surface, hydrogen does make sense as a fuel source if you mainly focus on the fact that it is sustainable and renewable, which is exactly what China wants. But when you dig a little deeper than that, it becomes clear that the technology behind hydrogen production and utilization is inferior in comparison to just using batteries, at least in my findings. Although I do have to admit that I have to do more research to form a solid opinion on this. But to China, it seems that it doesn't really matter if it is an inferior option to batteries. And there are multiple reasons for that. The most consequential one being that they are desperate, very desperate. And yes, air pollution is a big factor, but there's something much more important on the line. You see, China is the number one oil importer in the world, and their demand is increasing at a rapid rate. That means that China is increasingly dependent on other countries to sustain their current way of life and future growth. Which is not ideal, at least if you want to be the leading and dominant superpower that China so desperately wants to become. So, if they are to change that, they need to become self-sustaining. But in order to become self-sustaining, they either need to dig more oil from their own reserves, or they need another option. And considering China's oil consumption is about 5.3 billion barrels annually, 
and that proven oil reserves amount to only 25 billion barrels. It becomes clear that even without accounting for the increase in demand, that China will definitely encounter shortages. I mean, they wouldn't even survive 5 years if we stopped selling them oil. So that actually leaves China with two options left, complete sustainability or a never-ending reliance on oil exporting countries. And I don't think it's a mystery as to which one they chose, complete sustainability. But switching from fossil fuels to sustainable energy is not easy, and doing so requires massive amounts of funding and government intervention. Luckily, China has both of those figured out. So the hard part for them is allocating those funds. You see, if you want to become completely carbon neutral, you need to make energy, store energy and use the energy all without emitting CO2 and other greenhouse gases. And considering we already know how to make it, as there are multiple great ways to do it, like solar panels, windmills, hydropower and so on. The challenge then becomes storing the energy, and the most obvious choice is to just charge up some batteries and use it whenever needed. Unless of course you like to waste a ton of electricity by refining water to then use even more electricity to turn that water into hydrogen, and then use more energy to get it back to electricity when you want to use it. I must say, I don't prefer that method, but different strokes for different folks I guess. But anyway, all of these things cost money. A lot of money. And interestingly, hydrogen is actually vastly more expensive than batteries. So for China to fund this technology seems counterproductive. I mean, why not just buy a ton of windmills, batteries and electric cars to replace the existing infrastructure? Well, that's actually exactly what they are already doing. This is the reason why Tesla got a special allowance to open up a factory in China without having a Chinese partner, which is what every other automaker, and company for that matter, has to do. China needs as many solutions to their sustainability problem as possible to get rid of their reliance on other countries. And batteries will simply not cut it, as there are very few batteries being made each year. This is why they are willing to sacrifice short-term control over an international company like Tesla in exchange for long-term independence from oil exporting countries. And that means funding hydrogen-powered trucks and buses, even though they aren't the most optimal solution. So in the end, China's push for hydrogen has less to do with them actually believing in the technology, but more to do with long-term geopolitical strategies. Which I would have to admit, is not that surprising, considering everything I mentioned in this video. And that is the reason behind China's recent push for hydrogen.